Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our kids' ministry lesson for the week. And today we're going to get into a uh, a historical figure, an important person in the Bible, their whole life story. Uh, but before we get there, I want to talk to you about this shoebox. This is just an ordinary, normal shoebox. Okay, nothing special. But I want to ask you this question: If I told you that I can stand on it and it will not collapse, would you believe me? Because that's what I'm going to do. This box, I will be able to stand on and it will not at all collapse on me. It will hold me up. Now, I'm a big guy. You know that. This is an ordinary box. I've not filled it with concrete. I've not reinforced it. It's just out of my garage, a box. And I'm going to tell you what. It's going to hold me up. You ready? Watch this. My balance is bad. Here we go, there we go. Look at that. It did it. Great, now let's head back to my stand and we're gonna keep going with our lesson. All right, so were you surprised? Did you believe it? Did you believe that that box would hold me up? Well, whether or not you did, it's not gonna, it doesn't, I'm not offended if you didn't believe it. Uh, it's okay, but here's the thing. We're gonna talk about belief this morning, really, uh, we're going to talk about a life of a guy named Abraham. And Abraham is really commendable because he believed God. So here's what happened. Abraham lived a uh, long time ago, you know, after the flood. Um, and he lived in a land called Ur. And one day God came to Abram and said, I want you to move. I want you to pack all your stuff up your father, your wife, your servants, everything you've got, and I want you to move. And so, because God saw something good in the heart of Abraham. Abraham lived in a land that had lots of idols. People worshiped all kinds of different uh, fake gods. And God wanted Abraham not to be corrupted by that. He wanted Abraham to stay pure and true to him. So God said, Abraham, I want you to move. I want you to come follow me, join me in a new land, and I'm gonna be your God, and you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna become my people. And so he wanted Abraham to leave those false idols. And, uh, and so God told Abraham to leave his country and his people and go to a place where he would show him. Really, he was saying, Abraham, I want you to trust me. I know that you know this place. I know that you know how to live here, but I want you to trust me and follow me to someplace new. And as God told him, gave him this instruction, God gave him a series of promises. And these promises are really, um, really important and significant. And so the first thing, God said, I will make you a great nation or I will make from you a great nation. What that means is, uh, it's kind of the promise of having descendants, children, sons, daughters, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. But here's the thing, Abraham and his wife had no children. But yet, that's what God promised. I will make you into a great nation. Second promise, I will bless you and I will make your name great. In other words, he, God said, Abraham, I will be with you I will provide for all your needs and you're gonna be like well known in the land as someone who is blessed by God. Third thing, I will bless, God said, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. In other words, God said to Abram, I'm gonna be so good to you that those who are good to you, will I will be good to them too. And if anyone treats you poorly, if anyone treats you bad, I will uh, get, I, I, will, I will treat them the way they treat you, all right? Incredible, last promise, or the fourth promise we're gonna think of today is that all the, God said all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. In other words, God's desire wasn't just to bless Abram, but to bless everyone on the planet, and Abram was gonna be absolutely essential and, and at the center of God's great plan. So what was Abram gonna do? Uh, no God, that's not, he could say, no God, that sounds nice, but I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay where it's comfortable. I'm gonna stay where I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna stay where this like nice place I've got. Abram says, no, God, I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna follow you. And he packed up and he headed out. He made the choice to obey God and to follow him. Abram believed God and then he built an altar to worship God. 
So God, if you're so good, I'm going I'm to praise you and worship you. And worship, just like Abram, worship is our best response to God. It's the way we need to respond to God's awesomeness, God's provision, God's goodness, his wisdom, his power, and his love. Then one night, as they're on their journey, some time later uh, from when God first came to Abram, he, he calls Abram out of his tent. At that point, he's in the new land. He made it. He arrived. And God calls him out one night, has him look up at the stars, right? If you remember, part of God's promise was what? To make Abram into a great nation. Well, now years later, he calls him out, has him look up at a starry night. I don't know if you've ever had these nights where you kind of get out of the city a little bit and you go out to where it's clear and bright and you don't have all the light pollution around you and you just look at the stars and there's like more stars than you can count, more stars than I could ever, ever count. And that's what God did with Abraham. Had him look up at the stars. And he says, Abraham, I want you to count the stars. If you can, count them. He says, that's just like how many descendants you will have. Your sons and daughters and grandkids and great-grandkids and great-great-great-grandkids are going to be so many, it will be like the stars in the sky. It's a huge promise. But again, Abram and his wife still no children. So they had to believe God. They had to trust him. They had to take him at his word and just accept that God was uh, that God never lies. They had to trust that God always tells the truth. Well, and that's what Abram and Sarah did. Now, if you know the rest of the story, you know that eventually they did have a son. And that son had a son and sons and sons and so on. And eventually God fulfilled his promise. And it is true to this day. But it took time, many years of trusting, many years of believing that God was going to be true to his word and the believing that God was trustworthy. And eventually uh, it came true. Well, we can learn about God's promises in the Bible. And that's what I want us to look at a little bit today. Some of the promises that God makes to you and to me. And the first promise is that God will be with us. That God is with you, God is with me, that God wants to be with his people and is with his people. Right? We see that in lots of places in the Bible, but in Isaiah 41.10. Right? Or if we were to read 1 John 1.9, we would learn that God promises to forgive our sins when we confess them. Right? If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. Or Jeremiah 3.33, God promises to answer prayer. Right? God hears your prayers and God answers them. Now, of course, we might think, hey, wait a minute, I prayed for this thing over here the other day and it didn't come true yet. Well, maybe you just got to wait. Maybe that God's answer is no. Maybe, maybe we, uh, have it, we have the answer and we just haven't noticed it because it's not what we wanted to hear yet. God promises to answer our prayers. God promises to do good things for us when we are following uh, faithfully, when we are close to God, when we seek relationship with him, God is good to his people and he is true to his promises. God promises to answer prayers and do good things for us. That's an incredible promise for us. Well, unlike humans, you and I, 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 I got bad news for you. I'm not 100% reliable. Those of you who, if, you, if you're one of my kids, you know that, right? Those of you who know me all, you might know that I'm not 100% reliable. And the bad news is your parents aren't 100% reliable and your friends aren't 100% reliable. Sometimes we let others down. But God is 100% reliable. You can trust God always to be true to what he promises. And he promises to love you, to watch out for you, to be with you to hear you, to listen to you, to know you. What he does is he promises to be your God. And all he asks in return is that you be his. Not his God, but his child. That He asks that you be his child. Uh, there's a verse for us, a new verse I want to share with us. And it comes to us from Titus chapter 1. All right, and Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says this. In the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie... Promised before the beginning of time. Let me read that again. In the hope of eternal life, 
which God, who does not lie, promises before the beginning of time. Guys, you can trust the promises of God. He doesn't lie, ever. Let me pray for you before we go. God, I want to thank you that you are 100% true and trustworthy and faithful even when we are not. And I thank you that you promise to be with us. You promise to love us. You promise to care for us. God, you promise to know us. And so I pray that we would be pe people that, that are faithful to you, that, can, that, that count on you always. And God, that we would learn more and more just how good you are. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.